Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the pulse doppler radar slash look down shoot down technique. Now what we've done today is put together a couple different things, I have a little visual as well as a quick little demonstration to kind of get you guys an idea of it. But uh, before I get too carried away, I thought I'd just pull out this really ugly illustration that I did here. And I just wanted to show you, we've got ourselves an aircraft over here on the left, and uh, we're sending out our radar beams, of course radar beams don't travel in a straight line. Uh, we picked up an airplane, and if we were to take a look at that in a two-dimensional thing, you get something that looks a little bit like this, where you have a single little boop, and we'd be able to identify the target by its range by of course how long it takes that radar signal to get back to us. Now it gets a little interesting however. Now if I have a target that's below us that means that we're actually going to get two returns. The first one of course is going to be the target itself. The second is going to be this big hard thing called the ground. Now if I were to take a look at that two-dimensionally I'd end up with something that looks a little bit like this. Now to make things extra complicated let's say I had something that's all the way 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 down here. That would mean that its return would basically be completely touching the return of the ground making it impossible to differentiate. Of course in the real world a radar beam is as you can see here, doesn't really come out in a very straight line. So what happens is the ground actually ends up giving us a return like this, completely concealing this airplane down at this low altitude. Uh, those of you who play DCS probably have seen this effect. If you've ever flown the MiG-21 around at low altitudes, the entire bottom half of your radar scoop is one blah, as it uh, desperately tries to go ahead and identify stuff below it. So we'll go ahead and pop over here real quick. Uh, we have this uh, lovely place. Um, you can zoom out a little bit, North Africa. And we have ourselves an F-4C, which um, is definitely the aircraft we want to pull out for this particular activity. What I've done is I've sent him to 36,000 feet and I've equipped him with three radars. He has an ANAPQ-120, which is a semi pulse doppler radar. This is kind of this one off an F4, actually. We have an ANAPG-68, which is a true pulse doppler, look down, shoot down radar. And we have a drop kick, which is a pulse only radar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go flip the pulse only radar on, and we're just going to start cruising along and see what we kind of encounter as we're just sort of bouncing like this. So we're cruising, you know, nothing uh, too scary, uh, you know, just kind of enjoying my little flight here. And yes, this radar doesn't normally operate in three dimensions like this. This is just because, oh, we've Pick something out. Let's see what we have here. We have a drop kick. It's um, we picked him up at a range of about mm, 21 nautical miles. We're just gonna keep on cruising. No big deal. No problems. Oh, whoop, what's this? Oh, we have somebody who's um, pretty high, about the same altitude as us, about 21 nautical miles. All right, cool. How you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. Just cruise. Oh, oh pick somebody else up here. Let's see here. Uh, 23 nautical miles. Actually, pretty good range. But this is where things get weird. Where did the target just go? Now you're probably saying, well, I mean, the target is, oh, remember what I showed you in my little doodle where I had the ground starting to create that strong reflection? You've just seen it happen now that I've even gotten close to it. I could pick it up initially, but once the ground took up the majority of the radar scope, boop, he disappeared even at 25,000 feet. So we're going to keep cruising, kind of keep, everything's fine, nothing to worry about. Oh, 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 who's that? Oh, I just didn't even see you with the radar. I saw you fly by with my eyeballs. Interesting. Let's keep flying. And you can see we're not picking up much of anything at all. Uh, the reason for this, of course, is if you take a look, these all aircraft here are very, 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 very low to the ground. You know, this guy right here is about 2,000 feet, 1,000, about 200. No matter how hard I try, this radar will never be able to detect those guys down there on account of the fact that there's no Doppler filtering on it. This is a non-lookdown, shootdown radar. So let's go ahead and uh, reopen everything here. I'll go press the little mission right back up here. Looks pretty good. I've got this guy sort of chilling right here. Everything's looking good. And let's flip on a semi-pulse Doppler radar. Now, this is a super unique radar because what it actually would do is it would use a, basically an algorithm to identify certain contacts that it could see in pulse mode and identify them as aircraft because of their return. So it was actually really, really clever. And, you know, it's trying to get around the problem without having to go to a true uh, Doppler radar. So this thing is a semi-Doppler. So we picked him up right away. Um, that was a distance of about 36 nautical miles. Sweet, that worked well. Keep cruising, oh, got another guy. This is a little, same altitude as us, 37 nautical miles. Let's keep cruising, keep cruising, nothing to worry about. Oh, pick somebody else up here. What do we got here? We have a distance of 38.8 nautical miles. Okay, interesting, interesting. So uh, he's a little bit below us now. Remember, we lost him last time. Cruising along, oh, picked up this guy. Let's see, we're at a range of 38 nautical miles. Okay, he's uh, cruising at medium altitude. That's about 12,000 feet there. Oh, pick somebody else up. Uh, this chap down here, 36 nautical miles away, is chilling at 2,000 feet. So far, so good. So far, oh, got somebody else. What's this here? Notice, by the way, both of these guys dropped out. Uh, this one right here, 38.1 nautical miles. And we got one other one. This guy looks like he's about 200 feet off, also at 38 nautical miles. Now, because of the algorithms and advanced programming of this particular radar, even though it's ancient technology, it was able to basically identify things that are down on the ground pretty efficiently. Plus, it used a little bit of Doppler filtering to help out. So what happens when you get yourself a modern radar, which has the uh, capabilities of that, like a true pulse Doppler? So let's go try that out. 
So flip this sucker around, go ahead and unpause. This is the Radar FNF16, by the way, which honestly would be an excellent addition to an F4 and make the thing a little bit more effective. There's actually quite a couple really neat versions of the F4 that never got made, which is kind of a shame. So let's see what happens this time. So we're cruising, we're cruising, nothing to complain. Oh, we got something. Uh, the guy above us, we detected about 39 nautical miles away. Cool, cool, I like that. Cruising, oh, got somebody else. I'll pick this guy up at 40 nautical miles away. Again, co-altitude here. Cruising along, cruising along. Oh, what's this? Pretty high. We've detected him at 42 nautical miles. Interesting. We have actually detected him bigger. You're saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. You've done something wrong. That makes no sense. How are you able to detect something below you at a longer range than something's at the same altitude? Well, if you think about it geometrically, I'm now seeing part of the top of the airplane, which has actually improved my ability to see something farther away than at co-altitude where I only see the nose of the airplane. Wow, that's so cool. Cruising along, cruising along, all right. We pick somebody up at medium altitude at 41 nautical miles away. Think of how much at the top of the plane I can see. In a moment, we're going to lose this guy because what's going to happen is he's going to get into our kind of dead spot there. Let's see, we got him at medium. We just picked this guy up at 43 nautical miles away. This guy was picked up at like 39. We picked this one at three and a half miles greater range, even though it's a very, very low off the ground. Keep cruising, keep cruising. Let's see what happens at this time. Yes. Oh, we picked somebody else up. We're going to identify him. 41 nautical miles away for this guy who's 1,000 feet above ground level. And let's go pick on this guy too. Uh, this one is 41 nautical miles away, and he's 400 feet above ground level. So you can see, because we're filtering out the frequencies involved with it, we're able to able identify things that are closing towards us or going away from us using the look down radar. Now you're sitting here saying, okay, I get where you're going with this. So basically you're using a little bit of fancy electronics to make it so you can see down with the radar. Yeah, what does that mean for us tactically? Well, let me show you a trick. Let's go ahead and grab this guy and send him down to low altitude. And let's go ahead and now flip on that really, really bad sensor this time. Where that lovely RPO Orion, again, it was early technology. It, it, they were still working the kinks out. You got you to respect that. You got to respect that. So he's going to go ahead and fly downwards. Now, if you recall, we lost everybody after 25,000 feet. So um, let's see if it makes a difference if we fly a little bit lower. Remember, our radar now, we're below most of the ground collider that we're cruising around. Well, picked him up, no problem. We, uh, we lost him for half his out. Picked him up, no problem. Cruising along here. Here, cruising along, picked him up, no problem. I believe this is 25,000 feet. Yo, cruising along. Oh, 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 oh. We got somebody else here. That looks pretty good to me. Oh, we picked up somebody else right there. That guy's at very low altitudes. Oh, we got this guy over here. He's also at very low. Altitude. Oh, look at that. We got another one. And I don't think we're going to be able to acquire that last one. Or was, oh, nope, oh, that was the last one. So you can see what I've done is I've essentially solved the problem by taking my radar dish and getting it underneath where the ground clutter was going to make it impossible for me to see the targets that I'm looking at. So again, conceptually as well as structurally, you can see that knowing a little bit about the way the radar works makes it easier for you. From a practical upshot, of course, in the real world, I'll show you something that I kind of wish they simulated a little better, but um, we'll kind of see exactly what I mean in a second. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take this aircraft and I'm gonna order it to fly straight up. Now, normally, if you had a true pulse Doppler radar, it would be tremendously difficult to detect these aircraft because if there's no Doppler shift, pulse only would be the only way you could detect them. So let's go ahead and test that as a theory. You know, put the, uh, in the DCS slash uh, flight simulator world up against this system. So go ahead and flip that sucker on. Again, now we'll get a little bit closer here to make it a little bit fair for us. And we'll go ahead and shut a God's eye view, speed up time just a teeny tiny bit. And ideally, we should not be able to see anybody. So let me move a little bit closer here. Again, like we're just a demonstration purposes. So because they're perpendicular to us, they have no movement relative to us. And as a result, we should not be able to see this aircraft. As a matter of fact, see this guy right here? He's a distance of 26 nautical miles. And look what happens. He's completely, completely invisible to our radar because he has no Doppler shift. Now, if I speed up time just a little bit, notice I suddenly spotted him. The reason I can see him now is because he's no longer perpendicular to us. He has a bit of an oblique angle. So now we can actually scan how fast. I mean, if I can measure this angle, which I can't quickly, let's see, 360 degrees minus eight. So about an eight degree window where he's completely, utterly blind to anything that's perpendicular to him. The only reason we can see this now, I'm not going to take the sign of uh, eight degrees real fast to multiply it by speed to calculate the shift, but you get the idea. You can see he was completely completely blind because of that. So although this technology is amazing, that's a heck of a downside. Now where it gets a little bit fun, of course, is you're probably saying, wait a minute, what if you flip on the uh, dropkick instead, which does not use that technology?
in a hypothetical world, assuming everybody's the same altitude, notice we immediately start to identify people who are around us because we are using a pulse only radar. So if we found that interesting, like I said, just to provide people with just a little bit of insight into what look down, shoot down actually is and how it behaves. Obviously, when you get into the world of phased array radars, that changes completely. Those are unbelievably, try that one, sophisticated radars that's going to have a much, much more complicated way of doing things, but it's also going to be that much more sophisticated. Enjoy.